Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim Welcome students So we are in lecture 2 of introduction to computing course um, Today our topic is discovering computers um, So let us first see our outlines and then inshallah step by step we are going to discuss the topics So uh, today we are going to uh, uh, we are going to discuss uh, the importance of computer literacy define the terms computer and identify its components explain why a computer is a powerful tool and then we are going to see uh, recognize the purpose of a network and then we are going to use uh, the uh, discuss the use of internet and worldwide application if we have time we are going to discuss um, the rest of this topic for but for this lecture uh, we are going to mainly discuss the uh, main components of a computer system and why uh, a computer is a very powerful tool and why computer literacy is important so with that the first term is that what is a computer literacy like why do it is why computer literacy is important why computers are important so computers are important because they are now integral part of our life use it to solve many problems that are related to data processing that are related to communication uh, web designing mobile app application development for drafting for uh, writing uh, contents for making slides for i mean for um, a lot of uh, other things and so that is why the knowledge and understanding of computer and their use is very essential and because computers are everywhere uh, with that, how can we define the term computer? So, computer normally, as you know, is an electronic device um, uh, that operates under the control of instructions. And these instructions are so stored inside computer memory. Now, for a computer, two things are very important. Instruction and the associated data. So, when you run instruction, there will be associated data that instruction manipulate. So you cannot say that uh, there is data and there is no instruction. So if you have no instruction, so computer will be like a black box. It will be like a dumb machine. You cannot do anything. Uh, you cannot take any advantages of it uh, or you cannot take uh, work from it. So that is why these instructions are important. But the other thing is that the instructions are stored inside computer memory whenever you are running a program. So in computer memory is of course a random access memory. Uh, uh, but if uh, you want to permanently store these instruction, you use storage devices like SSDs, or solid st state drives or hard disk or whatever you like. So there are mainly at abstract level, there are three steps that, uh, uh, that defines a computer and uh, that tells you how a computer process information. So at the first step, we, the computer accept data such as raw facts figures and symbols then in the next step it processes data into information it organizes that information makes it meaningful and useful for example you have unsorted list of numbers so that is data you give it to computer and you sort it ascending wise so that becomes information so there are other uh, like for example you have a draft and you want to perform spell checking uh, and grammar check so you can use a grammarly software or built-in microsoft word software that will perform the grammar check so after that the data is uh, like uh, processed and it becomes information finally um, the computer has to produce the result and show it on some output screen so these are the three steps main three steps that tells you how computer process information so uh, there is a term called information processing cycle in the first uh, step of this cycle, we accept data from input device, then we process them. And after processing, we can store them and we can display it on the output device. And we can also communicate or transfer that data to, to, uh, to some other machine. So nowadays, communication has also become a very important part of information processing cycle because we use uh, smartphones, computers for uh, like uh, communication very often. So uh, that is why like uh, communication is part of information uh, processing cycle. So then uh, a lot of time we define the term input device. So what is an input device? Input device is a hardware 
that you use to enter data and instruction that you use to give instruction to the computer system. So for example, this here we have uh, this picture. Uh, uh, it's a short quiz. Can you identify the input device? I will give you only five seconds. Okay, so the input devices are the keyboard, the mouse, the PC video camera, the scanner, the digital camera and the microphone. There may be other input device but mainly if you have a computer system, if you have a laptop, we use these devices, these peripheral devices to give data to information. Now that data can be in the form of text, that data can be in the form of video, picture, instructions, voice like output for scanner that data can be uh, a document which you scan and give it to your computer as a picture uh, it can be your picture a uh, uh, picture that is taken from this digital camera and then you give that picture to the computer system so these all devices are called input device because they provide information to the computer system they give the information to the computer system that computer will process uh, that what is an output device Output devices are the hardware devices that conveys information or that output information to a user. So once again we have this picture and I'm going to give you 5 seconds to identify the output device. Okay, so the output devices are the of course computer monitor, the computer screen, the speaker, the printer, uh, there can be camera can also be an output device because a lot of time you are watching a video uh, like uh, getting data from outside uh, outside of the world or like you are uh, giving data uh, to the uh, storing data inside your camera so at that time or in the card reader or sd card so at that time that uh, particular device becomes output device but mainly uh, the printer the monitor the speakers are the output devices and then we have the brain of a computer system the main component of a computer system which is also called the system unit it's a like box like case containing electronic component used to process data now this is the system unit it contains uh, like a cpu central processing unit it contains ram rom motherboard uh, modem video card audio card, graphics card and there are other uh, uh, circuitry, uh, power supply etc. So you cannot say that this is a CPU, this is system unit or this is a casing that uh, itself um, uh, has some important uh, computer uh, components. So this is the inside of a computer casing. Uh, this is uh, so what is the magical inside the black box? The magic is that the computer is processed inside this black box. So we have, you can see, uh, we have circuitry, main uh, motherboard, all the input output devices are in fact connected to this motherboard and inside this motherboard we have a lot of details, um, some chip components, um, capacitors, semiconductors, resistors, transistors. So you do not have to go into the detail but uh, for now at abstract level we can see different slots. Uh, uh, and so this is a storage unit this is like in, you can see this is your hard disk a permanent hard disk uh, where you store data permanently and then we have uh, this uh, power supply so different types of voltages are provided to different components of the computer system and then this is the brain of computer system the central processing unit where all the processing is carried out and then of course we have uh, slots for uh, ram random access memory so you can insert one two three or i mean the slots varies the you can increase or decrease the size of map but often uh, if the ram is you have a good ram so this means that your processing uh, will be good and um, you will not be in waiting state like often and then we have different other uh, components like you can insert video card over here you can uh, insert sound cards and uh, like uh, there are detail but for this course i think you should just have a basic knowledge of all these components i'll recommend you people to go and watch the videos uh, where they tell you how to disassemble and assemble computer system but nowadays we have laptops so the videos related to laptops are also available uh, 
uh, if you have a laptop give it the serial number of a laptop or the name of the laptop then you can find very useful videos that tells you how to disassemble laptop how to install um, the ram how to like configure or how to remove battery etc so that will be very helpful okay uh, there are two components that are very important uh, inside the motherboard so these components are called the central processing unit or the cpu so here we have intel cpu uh, this is also called a process processor uh, this carries out instruction that tells the computer what to do so if you have a good processor it means that the computer your computer processing speed performance will be very good so i recommend you people to go for uh, like uh, core i7 uh, having a ninth or 10th generation and uh, i'll also recommend uh, buying a ram of minimum 8 gigabytes so it uh, uh, if um, you have more than 8 gigabytes of ram that is very good but the minimum ram should be 8 gigabytes so memory normally it holds temporary data that it provides to the processor because processor speed is very fast the hard disk cannot match the speed of a processor so for that we insert or we install um, uh, faster memory which is expensive but it is faster than uh, the hard disk uh, it is used to increase the speed of a computer system to give the data instantly to the processor so that the processor can process information instantly so uh, the other thing is the storage unit uh, and hard disk and i have told you many times that go and buy ssd hard disk because you will feel a lot of Im improvement in the performance of a computer system when we you have a solid straight hard drive okay with that uh, let me uh, check out the time because uh, okay still we have a lot of time uh, so let me go back and maximize slideshow okay so with that let us move on um, what is a storage normally storage devices are used to store data instruction permanently uh, so that in the future we can use it um, storage media is actually physical material on which data instruction and information is stored so um, like you have a hard disk or other thing and we have a storage device that records and retrieve item to and from the storage medium so uh, uh, like uh, in the hard disk we have uh, plates and head uh, inside these plates uh, uh, we have uh, like uh, sectors and clusters uh, so they are used to permanently store data i'm going to show you the picture where it will be uh, very easy for you to understand uh, there are other type of storage devices uh, rarely nowadays they are used uh, they are called floppy disk they are thin circular flexible disk enclosed in a rigid plastic sheet uh, there are some other types of storage device like a zip disk looks similar but has much greater storage capacity normally it equals to 170 floppy disk the storage capacity equals to 170 floppy disk but they are rarely used nowadays uh, cd drives are rarely used nowadays so you don't you do not have to worry about them you just have to have information about them uh, <coughs> nowadays you have online uh, storage in the form of uh, dropbox google drive uh, one drive so you can also used to use them to store your data permanently and they are very reliable as well so i was talking about the storage device and one of the important storage device is hard disk so this is the inner picture of a hard disk you have circular plates and a head so circular play, uh, plates uh, rotates um, clockwise or anti-clockwise anti it depends on the manufacturers but the head moves to and fro and it uh, uh, like reads the data or writes the data on the plates so the hard disk provides much greater storage capacity than the floppy disk and the zip disk uh, it is located housed inside the system unit permanently uh, uh, as i told you earlier that go if you want to buy a hard disk go for ssd hard disk because ssd hard disk is very different from this uh, old hard disk this old type of hard disk are normally mechanical and electrical in nature so they are slow if you want to improve the performance of your computer system i'll recommend you to go and buy solid state drive because they are uh, electrical in nature and you will feel a lot of improvement in your 
uh, computer processing and also it will consume less battery so your battery life uh, will be high so and that is why uh, I'll strongly recommend to buy the solid state drive uh, there are some other types of storage device called CD or compact disk uh, just as floppy disk they are nowadays rarely used very few people use them uh, I'll recommend you to use uh, memory stick or to use uh, floppy uh, memory stick or USB universal USB stick because uh, their capacity is now much more higher than these CD-ROMs CD-ROMs are normally flat round portable metal disc uh, and what my, I'll tell you that my experience about the CD-ROM was not good so they are not very reliable so if you have important data go and store uh, buy some external hard drive it will cost you around about five to six thousand and you will get one terabyte of hard drive disc so there you can like store your important data as a backup so if anything happens to your computer system you can then retrieve that data from the uh, your backup from the external hard drive cd-rom or cdr w rewritable normally they uh, have the capacity of 673 to 6 uh, 768 mb dvd rom or dvd rewritable uh, have much more capacity than the cd rom normally up to 4.5 4.7 if only one side is used if two sides are, are used then uh, depending upon the quality of the dvd uh, you can store data about 17.1 uh, gigabytes <laughs> so the storage media also come in different forms like you can see there are memory cards in your uh, installed in your smartphones and there are other types of different devices like um, digital cameras handheld computers that also use these miniature storage media uh, like once again uh, smartphones or computer normally they comes in a very uh, large uh, they they are having very large um, storage so rarely UVs uh, rarely UVs uh, you people will use these types of miniature storage media, media but still you should have a knowledge they are portable thin memory cards used in digital cameras handle computers like smartphone etc so with that the, uh, now the point is that why is a computer so powerful so what makes a computer a powerful system a computer is powerful because because of uh, like uh, the main thing that computer distinguish uh, itself from the other device are called uh, 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 is that computer have a very uh, fast speed it can process data very quickly like within a second it can process a lot of data and it may take hundreds of thousands of years for human being to like uh, process that data so for example if I ask you to add hundred numbers um, so it may take you uh, one hour or two hour or the whole day but for computer it is just a matter of seconds so speed is one of the features of computer that makes it so powerful then the computers are tested several times the hardware the software are tested several times we have different testing strategies techniques so that makes computer a very reliable and dependable machine and computers will for the most time i mean i cannot say that computer have 100 percent accuracy but um, for the most time it will give you accurate result like 99.99 percent it will give you accurate results so they are highly robust highly dependable reliable uh, electronic machine the other thing is that you can store a large amount of data like you can store terabytes picobytes of data that data could be like your semester wise lecture notes your online video notes uh, your own personal data or your own videos so whatever you like but uh, it gives you uh, the storage capacity that makes it so powerful and uh, last but not the least uh, you can see that communication nowadays are very easy you can text messages you can send pictures videos so uh, like we use uh, software like viber whatsapp or like we use software like zoom or google connect or type of other types of thing that enable us to communicate uh, with our friends and these these features make computer very powerful and very useful handy uh, electronic device so uh, inshallah uh, that is I think uh, the end of this lecture 
uh, inshallah in the next lecture we are going to discuss what are computer networks uh, because computer networks uh, are everywhere mobile smartphones are connected together and we have internet where we access uh, our email uh, access different types of web page websites so all these things make a compu uh, computer a uh, very powerful machine uh, i would uh, at that i will just tell you that go for go and buy if you want to buy a computer machine go and buy a good powerful computer machine having good ram at least 8 gigabytes and um, a core i7 and like having uh, at least it should have 9th or 10th generation computer system and uh, remember to uh, uh, buy a laptop or a computer having a larger screen because it will be very difficult for you people to work uh, on a very small screen because now computer is an integral part of your life you are going to use computer uh, in your professional life for that go and buy a good powerful computer machine uh, i'll tell you that if you have 40 to 50 uh, uh, thousand rupees then uh, like you can buy a very good computer system so with that uh, inshallah uh, i'll see you in the next lecture till then allah is and take care